the question is, does the Apostle Paul teach a rapture? Now, the, the rapture, I think, is something we need to define. Uh, as many evangelicals understand the scripture to teach that, it is thought to be a secret snatching up of believers at some unspecified time in the future that is unspecified to us. When uh, the church on earth will be taken up to Christ, they will remain uh, in the air above earth, and the prophecies concerning Israel, prophecies that are said to concern Israel on earth, will play themselves out to fulfillment until uh, Christ comes. He sets up uh, what's said to be his millennial kingdom. Uh, there's the great and final uh, battle followed by the final judgment to come. That's a, a fairly widespread understanding of the last things, and appeal is made to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 at verse 17 to support uh, the portion of that scheme that I described in terms of the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, uh, reading out of the English Standard Version, then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them, that is the dead in Christ, in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. And our word rapture is taken from that verb, which is translated, will be caught up together. So, strictly speaking, yes, the Apostle Paul does teach a rapture, but does he teach a secret rapture according to premillennial eschatology? And I think the answer is no. When we look at this passage, what we see is that Paul is describing something that far from being secret is in fact quite public. Uh, you see that from a couple of details in the passage. Uh, there is Paul's statement that we will be caught up together with them in the clouds. Now, clouds, of course, is a way, particularly in the Old Testament, to describe the divine presence. And we see that imagery, especially in Daniel 7, uh, quoted by Jesus at his trial in Mark 14. You will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with the clouds of heaven. So that is a, a word that is uttered to the high priest who is an enemy of Jesus, far from being something that is secret, that concerns only believers. Uh, the appearance of the Son of Man in the clouds will be visible, will be public, and will be evident even to unbelievers. In the following verse, Paul says this will come with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. All of those are audible, visible phenomena, not things you would expect with a secret, private rapture. Further, the phrase, the trumpet of God, is used elsewhere by the Apostle Paul to signal the bodily resurrection and the final judgment. So we expect Paul, reading 1 Thessalonians 4 in light of 1 Corinthians 15, we expect the Apostle Paul to be describing the events leading up to, immediately leading up to, uh, the Day of Judgment. We don't expect, as the uh, dispensational premillennial scheme of things would argue, a, a long interim between what Paul describes here in 1 Thessalonians 4 and the Last Judgment. So, what Paul is describing here uh, taken by itself, taken with Paul's statements elsewhere, is that Christ will return. We don't know the day and the hour. Uh, when he comes, we will meet him, and all human beings will be judged before Christ, in the presence of Christ, clothed in our resurrection bodies, some raised unto glory, others raised unto shame, and believers will be with Christ forever. And that's the hope that Paul set before the Thessalonians as they were uh, grieving, as they were confused, and that's the hope of God's people in every age in the church.